Thanks for joining me today for another little look at Proverbs. We've done some outlines which you might be able to go back to and uh, look at. So I'm not going to review the outlines. We are in the introductory section of the book and we're in the section which covers Proverbs that were for Solomon. So that's chapter 1 verse 7 to chapter 9 verse 18 and then there are other sections thereafter. I'm not going back over them. Um, this particular section, as you can tell, is Proverbs 4, Solomon, so it's quite applicable that we read here in verses 8 and 9. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Now, you might, what does that mean? So I'm going to read that in a slightly more modern translation. It's not that modern, to be honest, but I'm going to read it to you from the New American translation, and it says this. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. Chains in the King James maybe sounds a little bit prison, but actually it is more the idea of ornaments about your neck. So let's just think about a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, the son is being told to hear. That's the good thing to do, isn't it? To hear, but you might hear and do nothing with it. So hearing is really important, taking on board what your parents say, taking wise guidance and counsel and direction from your parents is really, really important. If we go back through scripture, we, we sometimes find a number of men who didn't give wise counsel. Uh, we think of Samuel and he didn't advise his son. So we think of David in particular with some sons, he didn't discipline them. He didn't correct them. And so there are examples of fathers who didn't do what was good and wise and helpful. So remember Proverbs are teaching us principles that are good. They're not telling us that every father will be like this. Indeed every father should be like this but that's not what it's teaching. It's giving us principles. So the son is to hear the instruction of the father. So he's to listen. And then it says and forsake not the law of your mother. Your mother's teaching really is the idea. So your mother, now remember that your mother will teach you probably as much as your father because your father goes out to work. Your mother's responsibility in biblical terms is to bring up children. I know that's not a modern view but that's a biblical view. The Bible doesn't forbid a woman to work. In fact Proverbs chapter 31 will teach us very clearly that a woman is very adept in business, very skillful in her business and in how she buys and sells. But our primary role is to care for, to manage her home in Titus chapter 2, to care for her children, to bring them up. So children have to listen. This isn't just little children. My son, he says, hear your father's instruction and don't forsake your mother's teaching. That really means you don't just listen to it and walk away. You actually take it on board. You listen. And it has a consequence in your life. There's a positive benefit. So he says, they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy neck. Or the wreath that it talks about in the other version that I read is really the graceful wreath. It's, it's the fact that you've achieved something. Their guidance helped you be something in life. And then the second thing is that they shall be an ornament around thy neck it is the idea really that it, there's something, you, your life is the better for it. Your life is has been, there are qualities and characteristics, there are disciplines and principles, there are things that you do and practices you have that are the result of parental guidance and teaching. Now as we work our way through this book, it's going to be emphasised time and time again and uh, it, it's really worth us working through it, which we're going to do. My son, receive my words, hide my commandments, and incline your ear unto wisdom, and so you will receive the fear of the Lord, the knowledge of God, and, and you'll be wise. You'll be equipped for life. Chapter 3, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Chapter 4, hear your children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. In other words, he's really saying there's a benefit, there's a blessing, there's growth, there's development in listening. Wise listening and not forsaking. 
Now, as I close, let me just remind you the New Testament teaches this. The law teaches it, honour thy father and mother. The New Testament teaches it, Ephesians 6 verse 1, children obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right, honour thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. In other words, there is a physical, natural consequence of obeying parents and taking advice and guidance. It's good for you. It's beneficial for you. There is a warning there to fathers how they treat their children. They have to care for them. They have to nurture them. They have to feed them. They have to correct them. But they have not to do it to provoke them. That's a wise counsel for parents. So this little two verse section is really getting us to the springboard to take us forward to the advice and the guidance that's going to be given. And the next section we'll come to is going to get advice about relationships and friendships. And then in the final section of chapter one, he's going to warn about the consequences of ignoring the advice. We'll get to those in due course. Thank you for joining me. Read through the verses and read through the book. Indeed, may God bless you as we consider the great truths of this book together. Thanks for your attention.